Thanks to HelloFresh for supporting What The Tech. HelloFresh lets you just cook, eat, and enjoy. Go to HelloFresh.com slash WTT90 and use the code WTT90 to get $90 off, including free shipping. Hey everybody, welcome to What The Tech. I'm Andrew Zarian, and I am not joined by Paul Throat this week. I am joined by, uh, if you if you follow any of the shows here on the GFK Network, if you followed us over the last, God, 10 years or so, you would know this man. The man behind the GFQ curtain. I'm joined by John Bubb, also known as Suncast. How you doing, John? Nobody knows me anymore. <laughs> I'm not on any shows anymore, so nobody knows me. That's why you're the man behind the curtain. You're Oz. <laughs> You're yeah, the one that pushes all the buttons. You're the one pushing all the buttons here. How you doing, John? I'm doing all right. How about yourself? Good. Hanging in. Oh, I wait, got wait, like... wait. I'm doing pretty good. Uh, how are you doing? How you doing, John? I'm, I'm, I'm doing pretty good. Oh, thank you for that. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> uh, we got a fun show here today because um, uh, I haven't done a show with John in God knows how long, and Paul was not available today because we're recording on Thanksgiving week, and the schedule gets kind of nutty this week. So Paul and I are going to do something else maybe on Tuesday next week or possibly Friday this week. It depends. But uh, I wanted to talk to John because we're doing a lot of changes here at the studio again. Uh, we do this about once every five years. We do a lot of technology upgrades and technology changes. And I, I, I last week when I mentioned that I was building a new production machine, I got numerous emails from you guys wanting to know why we're using the hardware we're using, how we're using, how do we get on the air, what kind of audio equipment, uh, because we haven't done an update video since I believe 2013, and I think we're about time to do this. So the plan is we're going to start upgrading everything now. And by January, we'll have the studio done, all the little upgrades done, and then I'll do like a nice little studio tour and show you guys how we're doing this. But uh, there's a lot of components here, huh, John? And, and really... I'm going to say this before we even go down this list. A lot of this is overkill in 2020. It's gotten simpler over the years. Way, way that's simpler. The, that's the cool part. Like the fact that, okay, we don't really need to have three Skype machines anymore. I mean, can you imagine that? Like we started out in like uh, back in 2015, we were running like three Skype machines. Well, before that, before that, um, I forgot who I was telling this to. Uh, you know who I was speaking? I, I met a guy, uh, one of our, one of our viewers, Anthony, he he's, he's from the neighborhood. He's, he's, he's here from Queens and he brought his friend and his friend essentially produces events and galas and all this uh, a multitude of, of stuff. But the way he does it, he does VMix for everything and VMix call for everything. So we were talking about, you know, software you, we use, hardware we use and things like that. And, we, and I was like, you know what? I, I think it might be interesting this week to kind of concentrate on this since we are doing this new build, but if you go back to 2000 and let's say nine, when we built all of this, all this got put yeah. together, we had uh, right now, like the, we had, I think four different encoding boxes that were sending it to different service providers. We had four different Skype machines coming into one computer and I had built a matrix out of, uh, actually, I think I still have it here. Do I still have it? I think it's up there. I built a matrix th with, uh, component switchers. So we, we, we purposely <laughs> were avoiding HDMI because it got a little bit more complicated with it, but we were using component, a component matrix and I was manually unplugging and plugging in the pending on the show. It, it was actually uh, like a, like a circus act here, but it, we've come a tremendous long way and I thought it might be great. You know, John, you could kind of fill in the blanks here on, how it's simplified and well, how we done honest, it. I know, I know a lot of it, but I, it's, it's so weird because it's like, it's been years since I've actually physically been in that studio. Nothing has changed other than the, the couches. <laughs> well, you got a TV in there now. I do. Thank God I got a TV in here. Um, wh when you were here, were we, where was the desk? Was it where it is now or was it on the other wall? Yes. You, you had it next to that closet there. Okay. You had, yeah. you had just moved that like, not that long before. Yes, yeah, so I believe you were here like summer 2012 when you saw the studio yeah. last. Yeah, so a lot has changed. But 
I think might be cool to kind of go down this. So um, the key for us and the way that we record our content, uh, it, it really has a lot to do with vMix. And vMix has really been the driving force as to simplifying our entire setup, right? Because before vMix, we used Wirecast, which was a, a very good piece of software. Uh, it just, it, we outgrew it. Uh, and the same thing yeah. with VidBlaster before that, I think, you know, at the time I was one of the first people that was using VidBlaster in this capacity and it got a lot of, they gained a lot of traction because me and a few other people were using it. Then, you know, I kind of got involved more in the broadcasting side of stuff and we realized that we need to expand beyond it. But I, I, I do find it amazing how we've simplified everything. And for you, you produce This Week in Radio Tech, you produce a whole slew of shows. For you, it really comes down to vMix call, right? And and how you use uh, WebRTC video and audio. Anything I can do to simplify my workflow, because so much of what I do is done remotely, helps greatly. So like one of the things that I had been doing, because I was still using a separate machine for encoding, for setting the stream up, because when I remote viewer in, that takes up resources. Yeah, so for people who don't know. resources for me to stream. So we get so asked I was all the time. a separate computer. How do you produce the show in Michigan when I'm in New York City? And the key answer there is TeamViewer. Uh, for up, on, yeah. up until now, I mean, we've, we've, we've played around with other stuff like AnyDesk, but TeamViewer really has been the thing. But for me, Parsec has really been, I've been very impressed by the performance of this remote software uh, for managing other computers with Parsec because you get very low latency, very high frame rate. It's almost like you're there. So I, I, I have to just say that if you are looking to do it that way, Parsec is a great option. But for you, I mean, you really, you just team viewer in, you load up the, you load up the, uh, yeah. the software and then you start switching. Yeah. And then the, the biggest, one of the biggest improvements also is the fact that we have NDI now, and that was a game changer. With when, uh, when new we tech started, technology. NDI did not exist. So you want to explain what we it have is? NDI. Uh, it, it's basically taking video over the network. You know how we have like audio over IP now? Well, this is video over IP, basically. It's video and audio over IP. So you can send, you know, basically screen captures of your desktop. Um, Skype has native NDI output, which is really helpful if you're using Skype. Uh, so it makes it easier to bring in video content into uh, any video mixing software that supports NDI input. Yeah, uh, it very and it and it makes it very easy. But it, it is interesting the last five years or so how the technology has really come into favor of the internet broadcaster and the podcaster. Yeah, and I, I think and that I, would be the that's the two biggest things I think of in the last five years would be the fact that we have um, software now like VMix that integrates video calls, and then also NDI where you can integrate um, NDI sources from. You know, any sort of video source, if you got a, a camera that outputs an NDI over the network, you could have basically just one camera, pan tilt zoom camera plugged in with a network cable, send that over NDI, and that's all you need. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it's quite impressive, really, how, how well it works. You, but you, you don't have to have SDI cables running everywhere. You don't have to have separate power cables running everywhere. You can do things with much less effort now. Yeah, much less effort and better performance. A lot of yeah. it also has to do with the software side of things where it, it, it's really, the software has improved. So re to me, that's as important as the hardware. And I always tell people this, uh, the hardware that we're running now on this box that, it, that you have here is about four years old. I'm able to do more now than I was four years ago with this. Right now, oh, I mean- yeah. We have we have two cameras up. I'll tell you right now. We have two cameras up. We're recording. We're streaming. Uh, I'm sending it to another computer. My CPU resources are at 23%. Doing 1080p 60 frame a second video, 23%. John, I, I to people that have done this, that is a big deal. Mm -hmm. Very big deal. So uh, I want to talk about that and a whole lot of other stuff, obviously, here today, because uh, we're also going to go through our favorite Black Friday deals right now because we're approaching Black Friday. Big day. People are going to buy a lot of stuff. And I expect this Black Friday to have even more of a sale than previous years. I feel like the last couple of years, it's been eh because they do Black Friday week and they do Cyber Monday week and they do Black Friday in July and they're doing it every week. It's a Black Friday.
It's no longer about one day. Yeah, but it's even it's even bigger now because everything is going to be Cyber Monday because everybody can't go to the store. You're not going There's to no, have those yeah. hordes of people at Walmart anymore trampling each other. Oh my God, this is the first year you're not going to have that. What is the news yeah. going to do to cover it? What is the news going to do? They're out of a topic for Friday. <laughs> they have nothing to talk about. Uh, so I do want to talk about that and a whole lot of other stuff. But before we do, I want to talk about one of my favorite sponsors here on the show, and it's HelloFresh. I don't, I, I want to I say that I, I've always appreciated HelloFresh, right? Uh, I, it, I've been using them for, God, four or five years now. Uh, my wife loves it. My wife did a vegetarian diet, and this was great because they would send her her food, and I was able to eat mine, and she didn't have to worry about cooking two separate meals totally from scratch and, and you know figuring out where, what to buy for her meal or what to buy for my meal. Hers came in a box. And she knew what she was getting throughout the entire week. So it worked really well for her. But this is the great thing about HelloFresh. Uh, in this day and age, you know, it's contactless delivery to your doorsteps for easy home cooking for you and the family. Uh, something that I truly appreciate for HelloFresh is the fact that I do this with my kids. Uh, my wife and I absolutely love cooking with the kids. I got a five-year-old and I got a four-year-old. And it's one of the things that they absolutely love. My wife records these videos, posts it on her on her Facebook. And a lot of the recipes that we use are HelloFresh recipes. And it's from HelloFresh because it makes it so easy for the kids to know, here you go, open this up, dump this in. Now you got a perfect, perfect uh, amount of your ingredients. You don't have to worry about measuring with the kids and everything, but it's awesome. So what you do, they send you the recipes also. They're easy to follow recipes with simple steps and pictures to guide you along the way. HelloFresh cuts the stress out of your meal planning, which is tremendous. You know, I have a real big problem, John, you know, th and this solves it, right? My wife loves it for this fact too. The We pay for the monthly fee, right? Not expensive whatsoever. You pay for the monthly fee. You get the food, you cook the food. Do you know what happens when my wife sends me to a grocery store? I, I, I uh, swear, I, I wish problems. I was joking. Big problems. I wish I was joking here. I will buy at least $80 worth of cheese every time I go. <laughs> this HelloFresh is saving me so much money by curing me of my cheese issues. I can't, I, I, I'm not even exaggerating, John. I wish I was. It would be really funny to talk about it during a live read, but I literally buy $80 worth of cheese every time I go to the grocery store. And this is done. This is done away with that. <laughs> I'm not doing this anymore. It's also a great That's value. A say 40, it's a very good thing. You say 40%. When you use HelloFresh versus, versus shopping at the grocery store, I think it's way more for me because of my cheese issue. Uh, and they have, a, they, they have different packages also, which is always great. Uh, so the way that it works, shows up at your door. You pick the meal that you want, right? Whether you want a, um, a vegetarian meal, uh, you want the family plan, you want the individual plan. You know, there, there's a number of options you could have here. Over 90% of the ingredients are sourced directly from growers to ensure peak flavor and ripeness, which is big deal. If, you, if you've ever tried some of the other guys, uh, they not all of them do that. The, HelloFresh has always maintained tremendous quality. Uh, and also HelloFresh is committed to donating meals to those in need so far in 2020, which has been a, a, an astronomically uh, memorable historically as a year. Uh, for, for all the bad, but there is a lot of good. A lot of people are doing positive things. They're helping the community, and HelloFresh is one of those people. They've donated about three and a half million meals, which is unbelievable. Uh, I absolutely love these guys. I love the product. I use it all the time. Been a HelloFresh member for years, and I recommend you guys try it out. And here's a great offer for you guys. HelloFresh.com slash WTT90. That's HelloFresh.com, WTT90. Use the code WTT90 when you check out, and you get $90 off, in, including free shipping. Unbelievable offer from these guys. Uh, absolutely love them. HelloFresh.com slash WTT90. Also, what a great time to start it. You know, maybe maybe you want to you, you don't want to cook for the next couple of weeks after this big week a lot of us are going to have for cooking. Sign up for HelloFresh. Get it sent to your door. Start cooking these amazing meals and experience it. I absolutely love it. HelloFresh.com slash WTT90. I want to thank HelloFresh for supporting the show. So, John, let's talk about this build, huh? This, this PC that we're sure. building. Um, so, a, a lot of people wanted to know what the key components were here. And I'm going to go down the list as best as I can because I don't have the order list in front of me, unfortunately. 
Uh, so what I'm doing is Somebody's I. Somebody's unprepared. I'm, am I ever prepared? Is that is that a thing? Sadly, no. Sadly not. So um, one of the key things is that I, I bought this case here, and it's a soundproof case that I'm going to be using, and it has it's insulated on the inside, so I think it's going to hold more heat too, which I'm not I'm not crazy about. I got to do some more testing, but I'm doing a soundproof case, so it, it dampens some of the room noise in here. But we're doing an a, a Intel 10th Gen i7. We're doing a, a six core i7. We're doing a a, a Z490 Asus uh, motherboard. I by mistake ordered the wrong RAM, so I have 48 gigs of RAM instead of 64 gigs of RAM here. I'm doing a uh, two M2 uh, one ter I have a one terabyte M2 chip, and I have a 520 gig uh, 512 gig faster M2 chip. So I have a gig and a half, a terabyte and a half of storage i have a uh a 2070 rtx uh amd card in uh nvidia card in there uh, i'm doing a h60 corsair uh liquid cooled uh fan i have all silent fans in here nothing there's nothing shiny or impressive when you look at this thing it, the thing is a sleeper i don't have a clear you know, glass case where you could see all the LEDs and the colors and everything. I'm going very basic with this production machine because I needed to do one thing, and that's produce yeah. my content very well. So mine is now going to John, and John has been running on a, I think, six-year-old, seven-year-old machine. Oh, it's, I built this in like February of 2012, I think. Okay, so it's time yeah, for you too. So yeah, it's time it's for almost, you too. It's, it's, it's going on nine years. So what are some of the... um? Uh, because you're, you're friends with a lot of people that produce content. What are some of the trends that you've seen over the last year? Is it all about NDI and and, and even just IP audio, digital audio? Because, you know, right now you look at this. I'm, I'm using a uh, an Axia console here. Uh, radio, you know, it's all pro-level audio. It's all radio equipment, traditional radio equipment, uh, and very good stuff. Those The guys at Telos make unbelievable hardware. Everything here is outfitted by, uh, outfitted by Telos. I have a Omnia processor. I got a... A Telos HX6. I have a Telos phone system. I have all of it, but it, it. I've seen people are now dropping traditional hardware for just being all software based. It really depends on your usage and what you plan on doing. Um, I mean, you don't you don't need to build out studios in the same way that we did back in the day. I mean, the, like what we did and what Leo Laporte did. We, that just doesn't need to happen anymore. Um, what you need to focus on is what you can do to produce your content and get it out there. You don't have to have the greatest and latest hardware to do that, but you just got to be able to, you know, present your content in a way that grabs people's attention. Yeah. And, and we've seen it by Twitch that. streamers. Twitch streamers yeah. have done a great job at that, right? You look right. at any of these guys. I mean, it's very impressive. You look at the setup and then you realize like, I think for us, because we owe, I always wanted a full operational studio, right? Like you guys don't see the shots here, but I could have two people on this couch here with mics. I could have another two people on this couch with mics. I got a guest mic here. I got one. I got two what cameras it, on me. Yeah. What it comes you know, down to is that you have so many more choices now for, for hardware and ways to do things than you ever did before. And you can produce much higher quality content with that equipment. Which is yeah. really cool. I mean, I think a really cool example of this is the fact that um, you have that um, uh, stream deck now. Yes. And I think that's one of the big improvements is, is that people are using something like that. Um, you also have newer audio audio interfaces that do a whole lot more than what we could do before. And that's pretty cool. So um, oh my God, ground loops, dealing with ground loops. Finding the right yeah. sound card that didn't do ground loops, converting RCAs to quarter inch to one fourth to, you know, and then, and then just patching. I mean, if you want to do, if you want to do high quality video and you're talking like 1080p or 4k, yeah, you need to have the beefy hardware to be able to support that recording and editing. So but you know that's what though, John, a whole different ball you, game too. But okay. So let me ask you this. Do you really, because I'm going to give you a great example. Uh, I was watching a Twitch streamer. Uh, he was on YouTube actually. And he was a very nice setup. I mean, he had he was in a corner setup, had the blue lights on the back. He had that LED, you know, those uh those square lights, the LED lights you, you put on the wall. He had those. He had the nice mic. He looked unbelievable. He was streaming in 4K. He was doing mm -hmm. a 4K. Uh, I'm sorry. He was 
he, he streamed in 1080, but he, his show was in 4K on YouTube. And I was looking, I'm like, my God, this is so impressive. It's just a guy in his bedroom. And it the, yeah. the quality looks so far ahead of what most people do. And you're right that you hit the nail on the head there. You need to stand out. And that's kind of what yeah. we did, you know, 10 years ago. Right now, I mean, listen, I, I, I still think our studio stands out, our quality stands out. But 10 years ago, when we were doing, you know, 16 by 9 video, people looked at us like it was magic. It's funny because it's, I think a lot of what we did back then is now commonplace. Yeah. Not in, yeah. Not in a bad way, but in a good way. No, in a, the yeah, fact absolutely. That you can do what we were doing back then with so much more um, little effort, you know? Yeah, which is amazing, which is part of the amazing thing. Um, do you, is there anything that you, you're impressed by in the last year or so? Is it, is it all NDI for you? Is that what you, what's really doing it for you? It, that's hard to say because there, there's so much that is out there. NDI is really cool. Um, I, I think a lot of the surfaces out there that are doing NDI over internet and those type of services are really cool. Um, I think in the last like year, year and a half, what I've really have been impressed with is running this in the cloud. I think that's where we're heading and we're going to see more proliferation of that. The fact that people are running these entire productions, like what we're doing right now, people are using Amazon AWS or Google servers to do these productions and produce it all in the cloud. Yeah. I think yeah, that's I, where we're heading. That's what's mo what I've seen is the most impressive thing. So here's, here's something interesting though, right? Um, I've seen, I've seen the cloud based VMIX boxes, right? That's become a thing now. Yeah. Where a lot of people they're, they're loading it up on the cloud and they're able to do it that way. Isn't that what we do with you essentially? To a degree, yes. You're remote into a different machine somewhere else, and you manage and you produce on an external machine. We just happen it's, to own the more, hardware. It's more impressive because what they're doing is they're you, they're basically doing it all virtually on hardware that doesn't necessarily exist. Yeah, that's like amazing. A lot me. of the they they do a lot of um, graphic card emulation and that sort of thing, and 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 the whole sub networks and all that kind of stuff. I think that's that's way more impressive than what we're doing because we actually have all this physical hardware that we're actually using it on. Would you recommend someone do that? Like right now, if they're looking to build out a system and they're looking to build out, you know, start getting into it. And would you recommend that as the next step for them to do it on the cloud and not worry about the hardware being localized? I would only worry about that if you're very serious about what you're doing and you can afford to because it can get very expensive. Yeah. More, more than more than building it out yourself you you really need to know what you're doing in terms of cloud operations and running something in the cloud and working with amazon aws in order to get by doing that yeah it's it's very very technical it is it, it, but again it's very interesting and, and we're in the early days of that this is something we've yeah. seen over the last two three years starting to get you know some popularity and people are starting to use it uh, I, I would liken it back to when we were using VidBlaster. Oh my God! So, like, if you if you think about it in terms of like how well productions worked back then, yeah. and then how far we have come now, and you look at what they're doing with with cloud and the VMix in the cloud, and where we're going to be in the same amount of time. Well, it is it is all going cloud based. I mean, we already we know that, right? I, the, even the yeah. fact how how you, I'm yeah, communicating even radio is doing you. that. Radio yeah, is I, doing I, that. But look how we're doing, right? Your video is coming I mean, in. You can, do, you can you can have you can have voice tracking in the cloud now, which is unbelievable. You can run your entire radio station in the cloud. Yeah, that's and that that's so impressive. It's, it, it's quite it's quite an amazing uh, you know advance we've had. Uh, so here's my question to you. Um, you're sending me video through a web browser, correct? Yes. Okay. You're sending me 720p video. You're doing 60 frames a second over a web browser. I don't even have low latency mode checked on right now. And this is working stellar. You're in, it's almost like you're, you're directly in my production software. 
I don't have to worry mm -hmm. about anything else. I don't have to worry about screen cropping or anything. You're coming in. What do you think the next step in this is? Do you think it just that that technology improves with higher quality, or is there something? Oh, yeah. Is there a missing piece to this? No, no. It just it's going to incrementally incrementally improve. That's a hard word to say sometimes. <laughs> a lot of words are incrementally, hard for me, especially, especially with a couple cocktails in me. I can't say anything. <laughs> Uh, I want to talk, take a moment and uh, let people know if you want to help out, if you enjoy the shows that we do here, of course, go to our website, gfknetwork.com. You can subscribe to us. We're everywhere. Podcasts are available. Uh, yeah, everywhere. I'm trying to think. Are we not on anything? I think we're everywhere. Pandora has podcasts now. Spotify, everywhere. Uh, also, you can fund us by going to patreon.com slash what the tech. You can go there a little as $1 per episode goes a very, very long way for us. Um, let's take a minute and talk about Black Friday. Uh, as we were doing at the, the top of the show, uh, this is going to be a, is a very different story because these blockbuster sales, these blockbuster deals are not really going to be on the store side. Uh, people no. want to avoid, you know, mass gatherings. They want to avoid the stampede of Black Friday. We see it on TV every year, right? We see the disaster. And I'm telling you right now, I, I, I'm almost 100% we're going to see it again. There's going to be some towns, Walmart, that opened and it became a total free-for-all and they lost control. It's going to happen. But uh, most of these companies are doing it the smart way and they're doing everything online. And if you look at these deals and you look at the trajectory of what the holiday items are going to be, uh, Paul and I, you know, we, we normally do the Black Friday show. We do our holiday wish list. We do the best of 2020, the worst of 2020. I think there is going to be no best of 2020 this year. I think it's just going to be no. the worst. It, it, everything was terrible. So, I mean, it's like bottom. you said, the, the fact of the matter is that they, it's not just a single day or a single weekend now. It's a whole Every month day. long yeah. deal now. It's not just one day. So, it's yeah. kind of spread out. It doesn't have that, you know, one weekend impact or hype and leading up to it. It's just got deals throughout the entire month. The entire month is a deal. Yeah. The entire month. So uh, I want to go down this with you, and I want to see what what you know what what stood out to you more than anything else here. I have a couple things that are standing out. Obviously, we're not going to go into the Xboxes and the PlayStation story because we know that those are going to be the top top items, right? Everybody that's on everybody's wish list, every kid's wish list, every gamer's wish list is a PS Five and a new Xbox. So we're going to skip that, but we want to talk about some of the other things that maybe you are not seeing. Um, John, do you want to go down some of your list? Because you, you have some pretty good deals on here. Yeah, I can do that. Um, you want me to just go through them really fast? Yeah, or... yeah, no, no, no. Go through it and, and we'll discuss it. So, um, so like the first deal that I've seen, uh, that I really like is that Affinity Software is 30% off for, I don't know exactly how long, but, um, if you know anything about Affinity, Affinity Software, they make um, one called Affinity Photo, which is like a Photoshop clone or alternative. And it's actually really impressive. Um, if you're looking to get into something Photoshop-like without all the cost, Affinity Photo is a really good app to do that with. And with it being 30% off, uh, let me see, what is it? I think it's normally $50, but it's on sale for $35. And that's a license. You don't. And that's not a subscription. So you're paying thirty five dollars once, and now you own that software. Yeah. So unlike Adobe Photoshop or anything with Adobe, where you have to have a subscription that you pay every single month or every single year, this is a one time payment of thirty five dollars. And Affinity yeah, and Photo. Yeah, they have a whole ahead. slew. Like you said, it's it's almost like uh, what Adobe does with their thing. They have Affinity Design. Uh, they have, which does, you know, you could design icons, UI designs, mock-ups, things like that. You have Affinity Photo, which is their Photoshop editor, right? Their mm -hmm. Photoshop version. They have Affinity Publisher. Uh, I believe that's it, right? They got Publisher, Design, and Photos. Yeah, I've been really impressed with Affinity Photo from what I've seen of it. It, it, it doesn't have, like, everything that Photoshop does, but it has a lot of the same stuff. It does a lot of the same things, and it does some things better than photoshop even well what do you think what, like what so like one of the things that i've seen is, is like it does 360 photo editing a little bit nicer than photoshop does i think mm. the workflow that they have and some of the uh, features that they have for 360 editing is better than Which photoshop. that's something you've gotten into recently yeah yeah, yeah they 
Yeah, I, I feel like for a lot of people, it's it's a little bit easier to use this. It's less intimidating, I would say. Yeah, it's less Absolutely. intimidating. It's not that it's easier to use, but I think their UI uh, is a little bit. Uh, I don't mean it in like a dumb, dumbed down way, but it's a little bit more simplified compared yeah. to, you know, Photoshop being this whole wide array of, of all these different options here. Uh, that's an unbelievable de deal. $34 for this, 30% off. I, I think that's a very good deal. So, of course, Amazon also has all of their devices on sale. And, of course, my favorites are, of course, the um, Fire TV and Echo devices. So you can get, like, the 4th Gen Echo Dot for $28.99, which is a really good deal. Um, the Fire TV Stick 4K is $29.99, which is normally $45. Um, Echo Show 5, it's a smart display that's only $44.99. It's available at Amazon and Kohl's, and it's normally $70. And these are some really cool devices, and they keep adding more and more features to Amazon Alexa, which is just awesome. They just recently added um, Fire TV control to Amazon Alexa, so now you can actually set up routines that control your Fire TV. Wow. Which is awesome. So, like, I'll give you a good example of this. So... When I go to bed at night, I have um, a couple of routines or a couple of things that I do. One of them is that I set up a routine to um, turn on my bedroom lights. Um, and then after about a minute, it turns off my office lights so that when I leave my office, I still have some lights on and I can walk to my bedroom, which is already has the lights on. And then what I would normally do is I would have to give the, the command to run that routine. But then I would also have to say for uh, my Echo to turn on the Fire TV separately. Now I can combine mm -hmm. that all into one command instead of two, which is really awesome. So now all I have to do is is give the, the command for my bedtime routine, and it makes it so, so easy. And I that, just, that's actually I love it. interesting. Yeah, so yeah. You, you're, you're all about the Amazon Echo, right? Uh, you're, I'm, I'm more in the Google environment. Uh, that's, I, I'm, I haven't gone over to Alexa. Even That's though very similar. all I have is Fire TVs, which is interesting, right? Yeah. Uh, I, right. I, I, I love the love fact the that I can TV. control it now. Yeah. Um, so I can control lights, everything with my uh, Echo Dot. Um, they just came out with the 4th Gen, and for it to be on sale already, it's just awesome. So if you're absolutely interested in any sort of smart home device, uh, you have smart light bulbs, that sort of thing. Uh, the Echo devices are just awesome. Um, so if you want to get into light bulbs and smart light bulbs, Sengled is a good place to start. That's where I started. They have a lot of Black Friday deals going on right now. So if you want some smart lighting to go along with it, um, like they have a smart LED multicolor three-pack starter kit with a smart light switch for 30% off. Normally it's $100, but it's on sale for 70 So that's, that's a great very deal. good deal. Um, you can get light bulbs. You can get a, a two-pack of multicolor Wi-Fi bulbs for $29.99. That's a good deal. Um, their starter pack with just two bulbs in the hub. Uh, it's normally $40. They have it for 20% off for $32, which is a great deal. That's what I got started with. And now I have like six smart bulbs throughout my house. Um, it's not something that I put in every room, but where I have it, I just, it's super helpful to have all these things that I control. So I can tell my Echo Dot to turn lights on and off. Um, don't have to do light switches as much anymore. So it's just very useful to have so the all these Sanglet, routines and stuff. The Sanglet Smart, it, and it comes with a hub, right? It's hub-based, much like how uh, it, if you it like It depends so. what models you go with. If you go okay. with the Zigbee models, it uses a hub. But they also have um, Wi-Fi smart bulbs where you don't need to anyth have anything else. As long as you have a, a Wi-Fi router, you plug these bulbs in, and it works over the Wi-Fi network. Very, very cool. Uh, very uh, inexpensive too compared to what some of these other lights go. I I recently jumped over to the hues, to uh, the colored yeah, hue bulbs. Yeah, they're, they're definitely it, more expensive, which dude, is why I then, like Sanglade because if you're just looking to start out and get your feet wet, it's a very inexpensive way to get some decent smart bulbs. You're not buying something that's just like, you have no idea what the brand name is. You have no idea what the quality is. Sanglade is, is somewhat of a decent brand out there that's inexpensive. We're not having to spend the, the hundreds of dollars that you might do when you're starting out with Hue bulbs. Yeah. So when I uh, we recently did the whole second floor, 
and my my entire bedroom we redid everything so it, a big conversation was lighting right like what are we going to do for lighting and i really wanted to just go over to phillips everything i wanted to do smart lights i didn't want to deal with the light switches i just wanted to go all smart lights and do get it over with and then i did the math and it was going to cost me like i'm throwing a number out there i'm not 100 percent. it was like over 500 dollars. oh easy easily easily yeah. it was over yeah. 500 dollars and the comparable thing, if I just went to Home Depot and just got LED lights and just put it in there, it was maybe going to be like a hundred bucks or whatever, you know, maybe a little bit more. I think it was like $20 a yeah, bulb. Yeah, I mean, not to knock, not to knock Hue bulbs, they work very, very, very well and have a lot of devices integrated with it. It's a very complete ecosystem. Very, yeah. But, and then you go into like specialty sizes and that's when you get your butt handed to you, right? Like mm -hmm. if you want a high hat Philips Hue light, or if you want a, uh, a a uniquely sized Philips Hue light that really it's not it's not a standard bulb, that's when you get hit over the head. It gets very oh, sure. difficult then, to, and you know very pricey. And, in those point. cases, you might consider getting a uh, smart light switch instead and just using normal bulbs. That just way, you, can, that, yeah. you you are using a, a Hue light switch or something like that. See, I like I like the color bulbs. I'm a big fan of it. I do too, but yeah. you don't. Do you really need um, LED uh, RGB uh, bulbs in your vanity? Yes, actually, I do. <laughs> I need it everywhere. That's all I need. So <laughs> that's all I need. Uh, but you also had a couple other good deals here. Uh, did you talk about the uh, AirPods? No, um, the AirPod Pros are going to be one sixty nine beginning November twenty fifth at Walmart, which is eighty dollars off its normal price. Um, Technically, they're selling it for, I think, $199 right now, so it's not necessarily $80 off, but normally the retail price is like $249, so it's $80 off from its normal retail price. Walmart's selling it currently for two for $199, but on November 25th, I think, yeah, November 25th, uh, the AirPod Pros will be $169, which is very tempting to grab up one. I got to tell you, um, so I have a pair Do of have AirPods. I have a pair of AirPods, regular AirPods. Are they? Um, they're just regular. Yeah, uh, first gen, and I okay. got it because I couldn't get the AirPod Pros. It was inaccessible. You couldn't find them anywhere. So I bought them, and uh, you know they're fine. They're they're very good for what they are. But the Pros have a couple things that make them a little bit more desirable for me. However, I'm not going to yeah, get they, one they now. Create, the pros create the seal in your ear, and, and that helps with yeah. um, sound dampening and uh, increasing the bass response. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so that's what you're getting me for Christmas, right? Well, you want AirPods? I'll get you AirPods. Sure. <laughs> sure. Um, but, you know, the AirPod Pro, Pros at 169 that that's very tempting. It begins that's November 25th deal. at Walmart. $80 off. They're very nice. Uh, you also had a last pass, uh, uh, last pass right premium, which is a password manager. And I cannot recommend password managers enough in this day and age. Um, so last pass premium is normally like $36 for the year, but for uh, black Friday, they're going to have a 12th month membership for just 2160. And I, if you need to re remember passwords and you're still writing them down somewhere, either on physical paper or somewhere on your computer, do yourself a favor, please get LastPass or some sort of password manager. Yeah, it doesn't have to be LastPass, but just password managers in general. I use one because I have so many logins now that I just can't <laughs> remember them. And oh my god, at I know this everybody. Point, you really do need to have a strong password, and and this and the best passwords to use are just random strings of numbers and letters and weird characters, and you yeah. can't remember that. No, but that's where a password manager comes in. You and just open up your password manager, manager, copy it, paste it. And it's done. You don't have to remember that ridiculously long string of random numbers and characters anymore. You can have a, a really strong password that you don't necessarily have to remember. Something uh, I didn't put on this list here, but I do think it's it, it's there are two, two items. I feel like this season before we wrap it up here um, that, that I feel like it's going to be the year to buy it. And I've always been, I think last year was the first year I did not say hold on a 4K TV. I think last year, once we figured out, you know, standardizing HDR and where, where we're headed, 
with Dolby Vision and things like that. Mm-hmm. I, 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 last year was the first year that I said, okay, you know what? Get a 4K TV. This is the year. Um, I'm, I'm down to two TVs that are not 4K, and one of them is getting swapped out in a couple months. So, uh, we're, we'll, we'll see, you know, we'll see how it goes. But, uh, I got to tell you, this year is the year to get a 4K TV. These prices that I am seeing, unbelievably low. I believe Best Buy has a 65-inch Hisense TV, smart TV, Android TV, for $249. A 65-inch for $249. And they're smart, and I'll tell you why. They know there's going to be a tremendous amount of people looking to get 4K HDR televisions this year with the new consoles coming out. You know, yeah. if you if your target and by the way, you could get a TV anywhere from two hundred and fifty dollars, one hundred and fifty dollars, all the way to you know twelve hundred, two thousand dollars. It's up to you what you want to get. But you know, I, I don't think a lot of people this year are thinking about buying a twelve hundred dollar TV. They're looking to spend as little as possible because we it, it's been a rough year financially for everybody. But yeah, for two hundred for two hundred forty nine dollars, three hundred forty nine dollars, four hundred and forty nine dollars, you could get a very good TV. A generation old, maybe, but a very good TV. Uh, some of these deals that you're seeing are unbelievable. Best Buy has these really unbelievable deals right now for televisions. And they know this is the year that people are going to buy these 4K TVs. You know, the consoles are out. This generation console is out. If you're buying a console that's playing 4K video video playback and you're doing 4K gaming, you know you want to get a 4K TV. What's the point? Why would you do it on a 1080p? Or 720p right. in some people's cases. So I think they, they're realizing this is the year. The other thing that you're seeing a ton of is uh, security systems. Very good, high quality video surveillance systems for your house. Uh, but, you know, I'm, and I'm not even just talking about the Ring or, or the Nest stuff. I'm talking there's a multitude of companies right now putting out really good, really, really solid, uh, you know, rec- cameras, uh, smart, smart systems your house you know you could get a great great example blink right isn't blink amazon's home brand for this john i'm trying to remember i think it is blink i I can't remember who owns blink i think it's amazon blink home security fine yeah amazon company there you go Uh, i mean some of these prices it's so low like right now all new Blink outdoor wireless uh, weather weather resistant HD camera does 1080p video, sixty four dollars with two yeah. year battery life. It has a two year battery life. The I mean these well, that are, also and then, still depends on your, on how much usage you're gonna get from that. I mean, because that's the thing with a lot of these cameras is that depending on what settings you have, it'll last longer or sh- yeah. or shorter. But look at this five camera setup. You could do a five camera setup and it comes with five cameras and it comes with a base that you could see what's going on. 249. It's 34% off right now. No, not bad at all. Not bad at all. I believe it comes with an Echo Show. Oh, you could get it with the Echo Show. Let's do five cameras with an Echo Show. 259 with an Echo Show. Holy moly. That's unbelievable. But I, I think th- those are my top two things right now. If you're getting a TV, Get it this year. If you're looking for a home security system, this is the year to do it. They're very inexpensive, and the quality is very good. The technology's there now. You know, I have a uh, an older Arlo, which is 720 base. Uh, mm-hmm. It's come a long way since wh- when you my got your God, Arlo's. My God, it's come a long way. And you're talking only three years. Yeah. It's come a tremendously long way since then. So I, I highly recommend this year being the year that you guys do this. Um, yeah, I was looking he, at some of this stuff. Um, there was like some smart locks that I saw out there, which were I'm, I'm interested in somewhat. Um, there's also like another brand that I was looking at was Eufy, which is owned by Anchor, which is a decent brand name. Um, Eufy makes some great smart cameras out there. Um, my sister just got a one of those garage pads installed so that she can open her garage if she doesn't have her door opener. Nice. Because she's been locked out a couple times by her kids. Oh my God. I was thinking, you know, if you've got kids, one of those smart locks for your front door might not be a bad idea. Oh yeah. hundred percent. I have a smart lock. I I have, I have two of them actually. So very much worth it. Uh, you also had a couple things. Your kids can't lock you out. No, my wife can though. (laughs) 
She can lock me out. <laughs> uh, Amazon Fire Sticks. She does that as often? We talk about All the time, man. Depends on how late I come home. <laughs> That's really what it comes down to. Um, Amazon uh, Fire TV Stick 4K, $29.99. Very good deal. 45 yep. bucks. I always say this is a great stocking stuffer. I, I buy these all the time for people. They're, they're great. And it's got Amazon HBO Max on there now. Yes, it does. It has HBO Max on there. And also Amazon Echo Show 5, $49.55 yep. at Amazon and Kohl's, normally $70. That's another great deal. And you also had a higher tagged item here on your list. Samsung Galaxy S20 FE 5G phone. Unlocked. Yeah. Uh, you put it on there. It's $549. This is not a bad deal, actually. That's not a terrible phone. It's it's obviously it's great, not no, you know the top phone. tier, but it's a decent phone. And you're getting six gigs of RAM on there. I think it's a very good and phone. it's one of the latest devices. So I think that's a decent deal. Yeah, I think it's a very good deal. John, why don't we wrap it up here? Uh, we did a quick show here. I wanted to get something out there before the holidays. I know a lot of people are going to be shopping the next couple of days, so I wanted to give us a couple of my suggestions. John, where can people find you? Uh, they can find me on Twitter at Suncast. That's S U N K A S T. And also, you can follow me on Instagram, the same handle, Suncast, S U N K A S T. And I've been doing a lot of 360 photography lately and making like tiny planets. And so, if yeah, you follow I love me on it, Instagram, actually. you'll see all my 360 photos. Dude, I, I saw it. I was like, I wonder what he's doing. And then I spoke to you about it the other day. Very impressed. Those are great shots. Very, yeah, very cool. So, like, Flint's been adding a whole bunch of murals. And so, I'll just go around and I'll take 360 degree photos of like the murals turn them into tiny planets and it just looks so cool very very cool guys uh we'll be back next week as always uh paul will be back next week and uh, i'll see you next time take care